Okay, welcome to Advanced LaTeX. LaTeX is a typesetting program. It's free and is used for generating papers for journals, book reports, and books. And mostly used for math and scientific software. Okay, so we already discussed in the earlier introductory lecture about the basics of LaTeX. So now we'll get into more details in this lecture. So this is a sample output from it's called test.dvi. That means the device independent file and this is what it looks like in the YAP viewer and it's basically English set with nicely uh, nice fonts and math formulas with numbering and so on automatically done and what is the input how do you get a document like this so here's the input file the extension is dot tech from LaTeX and tech and so the way the document starts it you have this commands backslash command document class it's an article and the the default size for the font is 12 point so most reports are 12 point and books are 10 points and if you're publishing for journal they will actually supply the style sheet and it just so the advantage is that unlike Microsoft Word if you change the style sheet it will generate a different kind of layout for your paper or book so you can change the book, whole layout of a book, including page numbering and indexing, everything, table of contents, by just changing the layout and the type of the article and the document class. First thing, uh, you need the title, and backslash LaTeX is a special word which generates the this LaTeX, this uh, logo of LaTeX. Then you, and then you have nested, uh, nested brackets for putting stuff so you have a begin document end document then you have a command make title this will take all the stuff out here and generate a title in this case is only latex and the pa and the t package you're using the AMS pa mat so what happens is like a lot of commands will be defined by AMS mat so your journal will probably give you a similar package so you have their command so that it will look similar to the other papers in the journal so here is a tech command and there are no arguments to it. And so it was written in 1984 by Lampert, much before uh, desktop computers came along and it was already typesetting high quality and free along with tech which was written by Donald Cunard from Stanford. It was also free. And percentage uh, are comments till the end of the line and then you have another, for example, begin a line and end a line aligning and backslash backslash means a new line and backslash, one backslash is escaping the character so in this case it's a table tabular environment ampersand means for one column and e0 e equal to mc square and then you can see a lot of examples of math formulas so it's full of math formulas especially uh, for typesetting math which is not possible in Microsoft Word or any other document setting it's pretty hard so in LaTeX it's very easy to generate arbitrary large mat formulas. Okay, let's see how does a LaTeX system work. So from the tech file, you get a doc, uh, you get a tech file or LaTeX file. This is an input format, and LaTeX is built on top of tech. And then PDF to tech will generate a PDF file. PDF LaTeX will generate a PDF file out of LaTeX input. And then uh, LaTeX will also generate a DVI file by default, which is a device independent. So the reason is that uh, you don't want to generate the, you don't know what you're targeting, what kind of printer you're going to access, like 1000 DPI or 1200 DPI or 600 DPI, which is a laser printer, or uh, 300 DPI, regular printer. So then you, so this is a very small file, because there are no fonts. Then you run it to DVI to PS, to Postscript. So Postscript also doesn't have fonts, the fonts come in from the side. Postscript has own collection of fonts. Printer has, the Postscript printers have their own fonts. So it's still small. And Postscript can generates PDF. PDF actually has embedded fonts. They can be copyright or they could be any kind of fonts. And then this could be printed on any printer, even if the printer doesn't have fonts. And why, why is the fonts so complicated? Because they're very hard to make. And they're usually copyright and you have to buy them from the, uh, license them. So what is the LaTeX workflow? You basically edit a uh, file in Emacs or Vim or Notepad 
and then you check I spell is a basically ASCII file. Almost every input to these programs is an ASCII. And similar, and then it, you get a tech file. And if you do a tech program, and all these style sheets are there: plain tech, AMS tech, LaTeX, second edition. And when you run LaTeX or tech on it, you get a log file with all the messages saying, "Hey, this line is long. This line won't fit on this page, and stuff like that." And you get a DVI file. You also get an aux file, which contains the index of all the things that appear in your document. And the aux file is the next time to fill in the line. Uh, table of contents and index in your output then you have a driver type setting driver it will uh, it will actually generate something that can be printed but before printing you also need fonts in this case uh, you, you write your font description in a language called metafont which is again by Knut and it's a really good language it's probably the top language around but it's only for generating fonts and the program is metafont there's a nice book by Knut on meta font and tech and so the meta font program takes a description of the font and generates a TFM file text uh, font description format which LaTeX tech uses to t to lay out the characters on the on the device on the page or whatever you're going to target and also generates a font uh, descriptions uh, the, 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 the true type kind of font descriptions in a PK which is a compressed format and then that PK fonts are needed by the driver to drive the printer and then the DVI just contains character and the positions the font name and which character is placed at which point so this side of fonts this is the type setting and this is a printout and the input comes in as a text file so on Windows we have something called MCTEC which is a free version of LaTeX on Windows it contains meta font tech and every, all the things that you need to run on Windows so basically you download and install MCTEC and SQL and uh, MCTEC so that you can find it again in your path then you start run a CMD console window and then you run the LaTeX command assuming LaTeX is in your path it will come from MCTEC bin and then you have a hello.tech which is a file you wrote hello world or some simple thing then you run it this will say this is PDF tech it prints all the numbers version number is a pi or 3.14 and MCTEC 2.9 whatever saying then it's loading the file c colon hello.tech and it's saying latex second edition and it's seeing the hyphenation for all these languages it knows about then it reads a style sheet because the article type you're targeting and it's telling you what kind of document you are there Have, and then finally it says no aux file hello that's an index file auxiliary file not there so it wrote one then it writes the output to hello.dvi one page and 300 bytes so it's really 230 bytes really small and a log file contains details of error messages if there are any it's again in hello.log the same name as the input and to see the dvi file you type yap hello.dvi you see hello world in a laid out on a page and then the next thing you can do is convert it into a pdf file so you open hello.tech you latex the hello then you can say dvi pdf hello.dvi you get hello.pdf so this command with any messages you'll get the messages out of which are not shown so hello.tech is basically a simple file it says document article and begin document hello world end document so you can see latex is basically a bunch of commands and bunch of characters to print it's not about the layout is done by the computer so latex allows you to concentrate on the the, the, the content instead of the layout so because the layout is a different function from the content so usually in scientific and math papers you're more worried about the content and finally you just uh, LaTeX will actually polish it up and nicely lay it out for you and then you can tweak it if you want but the the presentation is not really important till you have the all the document right so this part is the most important part in your papers and book if you're writing a book really don't care about which font you use till you actually have a book ready so and then the journal may actually change the font and stuff so here's an example so the syntax is basically a commands and then square bracket options and parameters to the command so in this case document class 11 point is a uh, optional and an article is a type of the class of the document you're going to generate and these are like nested uh, begin document end document and then there's a command called chapter and section and section as a name, subsection as a name, and some some text. 
and your title page basically has again it looks like this it has a document class 11 point a4 paper because in India and stuff they use a4 paper and US they use letter size so if you generate a paper in one layout it may not be printable because it will overflow on a letter a4 is slightly bigger and so report so you to target the right size and if and you never actually send the DVI file to the journal, you send the tech file so that they will actually change the document class and print it according to the journal or the books that they have in mind. Not the way you lay out, but they will lay out the printing guy, printer or the publisher will lay out your pages. You document, then you have a title, you have author, you have a date, and then you date you can also say slash backslash today. So later when it runs, it will fill in a date for you. Then the, this is a make title as a command. It will take all this and generate a command for you, and then end up the document. In this case, you can look it on Wikibooks, LaTeX, on online document structure. But most of the stuff you can f search on Google and find help about LaTeX. This is just to get you started. Title page looks like this: some title, author, and date and title. And the first thing you'll write in your report is abstract. So you'll say begin abstract and abstract and you put in some abstract out there and it's inside the document. So in this class let's look at the, the wiki.tech, the one you saw in the beginning of the text. So it's using the package AMS tech and then this is the text that actually that gets typeset. And this is a comment. And then you got a print out of that. So let's look at all the latex commands that you have at your while typing. So first thing is that spaces don't matter. You can have one space, two space and um, empty line is one a new para so multiple spaces get compressed multiple empty lines get compressed and if you want to type any special character like dollar you have to put a backslash in front and the quotes are smart so basically what that means is uh, if you have two open quotes together it becomes a double quote and two close quotes becomes a double quote close uh, close quote and the opening quote looks different from the closing quote so those are the quotes it has met a couple of type of quotes and you should mix them up you should look carefully at the quotes in a book and and you should be using the same kind of quotes you can't really use just the same quote for begin and open they're different and that many types of hyphen also so you may not be you might think they're all minus signs but they're not so 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 in daughter-in-law there is a small hyphen and when there's a, a now uh, the number range it's a double hyphen it becomes slightly bigger and then it's called a n dash m dash n and m are measurement sizes of character and they're used from the time before computers did typesetting it was done manually there's a triple dash also and and if you have a dollar that means it's a math number mathematics mode so inside a dollar the dash means a minus so it's a minus one it's laid out differently there's a space between the minus and the one and if you after you start typesetting you'll start noticing all the differences in the good publications and you'll notice good publication and bad publications and you'll notice that like most of the documents published in Microsoft Word are very sloppily done and lots of typos will be there including fonts wrong fonts and stuff like that including in PowerPoint you see these errors LaTeX has a, a mode for slides also which is called SlideTech and if you're interested you just change look it up SlideTech and you have to change the document style to slide tech and it'll get slides and it has also uh, Cyrillic and uh, foreign characters so if you have a hotel with a, a nave for example double dot on top of I or the these kind of characters from Swedish or French or German you can these are the characters you can generate a backslash open quote O will generate this O of this type of O and usually they're not there except for in your scientific author names and stuff like Godel you have to use O double dot like this is used for Godel and then if you want to once you have a report you can uh, take a bunch of reports and then make a book out of it by just concatenating or including them hash include uh, backslash including it in a book so it's pretty easy to combine documents from a command line. You don't actually have to do any UI work at all. So in the article, you have section, subsection, sub subsection, and then you have paragraphs of paragraph. And these are not normally used, but you could use them if you really had. And if you are using the report, you have a part and a chapter. And inside the, the chapter, you put a title. 
and then below the chapter you'll write the chapter notes and on a page you can put a footnote inside the text backslash footnote in some text and it becomes a footnote automatically and gets numbered automatically by latex it will appear on the right page so it won't just get bunched up in one place and fonts so the fonts are basically the two two things you're not going to say I want Calibri or Helvetica or something so you just say basically I want Sheriff or Sans Sheriff or typewriter font and later on LaTeX will decide or you can tell LaTeX the, the style sheet what is the Sans Sheriff font that is going to use so and then you say emphasis or, and italics and bold you don't really get into fonts till you are ready to type in a document so it's a text italic text sans sheriff text uh, typewriter and then you can nest it arbitrarily amount of nesting you want to emphasize typewriter so you can see emphasize typewriter came like this sans sheriff was emphasized so it came like that and then we have uh, the style sheet suppose style sheet is 12 point and then normal text will be 12 point and you can, then you can uh, use a in a command called backslash small it will make it smaller by one point point is a measure of the size of the character and we'll look at it later or how points is there but and you can use small footnote size script size tiny or large with a capital L or a cap fully capitalized or huge or capital huge to get up to 25 points and if you change a class you get difference and you can actually put hard code the, the font sizes but point size is never done because uh, it depends on the scale of the print the printer scale what they're going to print on and they will so the large will depend on what kind of uh, media you're targeting a book or a handbook or, or a report so the fonts are not absolute they just increase one point or one point more or less depending on small large and you'll be using these commands not these numbers so what are the font sizes so the typically we use a millimeter mm which is 125th of an inch so this is a mm assuming that this slide is not scaled and centimeters 10 mm inches 25.4 mm a point is about one third of a millimeter so three points per per millimeter which is 172 uh, of an inch and m is the size of the character m in the current font so m the size of m depends on the font you're using and X is the size of the X font and similarly there's a N and there are many more font sizes but these are the typical ones you see point and M and E X stuff like that so what are the fonts we have we have Roman so most common is a Roman font text Roman typewriter and slanted and emphasize and then sans sheriff boldface italic small caps so everything is capital but small and the regular font normal font and then sizes are large huge and stuff and the next thing you need are commands to generate point uh, enumerated items itemized description so let's see what they are you want to make a list of items so you say enumerate enumerate means one two three itemize means dots or uh, you just put a backslash item and write something it will put a dot or you can nest it or you can put a dash item and an optional argument so it will put a dash for instead of a bullet point and then there's something called description so there's a begin description end description and then there's a word out here item the item word and this word is defined in the sentence that continues after that and then there's a command to to uh, align the text on the left align it right align it or center it you say begin center end center to and this is sometimes done when you have something important but usually you won't be aligning it right align unless it's a quote or something and if you want to write a poem or something or a quote something say begin quote end quote and it will come out like this indented on both sides and generally uh, this is a poem example and you say begin verse end verse so it looks like that a poem it's a, it's, and then you can put a uh, backslash backslash to generate a new line otherwise it becomes a single para so next thing we have is the verbatim so verbatim is basically you want to print a piece of code 
or you want to paste some mail text or something you don't really want to format inside they might be only tick commands you want to show so you say begin verbatim and verbatim and then you have something inside it and everything every character is printed as is and then there is a with a star so what happens in, with a verbatim star even the spaces are shown off clearly so that if you're trying to show some coding example with how much so you can clearly read out the spaces number of spaces that used out here and the other command like a verbatim you can say backslash verbatim backslash l dots and then some command l dots so you'll get dot dot so the so you can use backslash verbatim it will print l dot as it is between this character and this character so l dot came out exactly otherwise l dot would have become triple dots like this this l dot and then we have tables if you want to generate a table you say begin tabular and tabular then you say uh, you can use a vertical bar to indicate a, a table so right a line and left a line the two columns out here and h line is a horizontal line you draw a horizontal line and then you have a 7 c 0 you want to write out here and ampersand means a next column hexadecimal and backslash means new line and then uh, in this case you're doing a C line 2 2 that means you're drawing a line out here and then uh, you have a binary number and then again you have a horizontal line horizontal line two horizontal lines and then another horizontal line out here so and the second one the, the tabular is basically inside a table you have a para of size 4.7 centimeter and this is a para then you have a horizontal line then you have a para and the end of the para and then a horizontal line and the, the most important use in LaTeX will be the math mode so math mode starts with a dollar and ends with a dollar or double dollar or you can say begin display math which will lay out a formula on a new line and end display math so what happens is between the dollar and uh, dollars between the two dollars you can write any formula so backslash limit is a, limit is a command and with the end to infinity so it, it puts the backslash infinity like this the font and then backslash sum is a sigma sign and k equal to 1 to fraction 1 by k by k, uh, k square so, so 1 by k square so th this is a square k is a square and equal to a uh, fraction pi pi by pi is pi square by 6 so this is saying this the sum of this of this 1 to n as n goes to infinity or 1 upon k square 1 upon k k square is equal to pi square by 6 and then you can arbitrarily nest this stuff to make giant formulas which are properly uh, sized in a range so in this case you're doing same thing but in display math mode so you can inside so you can there's a formula for square root of x quad is a space you put some space out here then square root of x square and square root of y so x square and square root of y it's a dollar mode then some space again then again another formula square root of 3 uh, square root of 2 uh, not this is actually 3 you given out here so it's a cube root of 2 then you can say third third is this kind of symbol x square plus y square and then you have mat all this greek letters you can use backslash lambda and stuff you can look everything online or look at the latex manual you can even make an array of equations say so begin equation array end equation array and then you have a bunch of formula and all line on the equal to sign f equal to cos x so cos is not just a word cos but it's a math formula so it's a backslash cos and because the equation array it gets numbered automatically so later on you can put a reference uh, out here symbolic reference and later on you can say in formula 3.5 we see something and you can look at uh, latex short intro or something on google or latex symbols to find a list of symbols that latex has latex has lots and lots of symbols and tech also and uh, bibliography is usually very hard to generate because you do remember a numbering scheme and different journals are different styles and if you send it to one journal then you have to change again for another journal so what LaTeX does is you have symbolic references you just say cite PA and then later on bib I a bibliography item in bibliography is there uh, it's a two digit number 
and in this case bib item pa is h partal the tilde means unbreakable space and emphasize german tech and basically your type type setting this text and here you can reference it by using site and this tilde means there should be no line to null break at this point this is unbreakable space so there's one or two and if you have another reference out here it may become two and this will come two automatically so in the bibliography when you say begin bibliography you get this uh, bibliography text out there and there's a lot more you can do in LaTeX and you'll find out as you need it and generally the most common way to learn LaTeX is to copy somebody else's uh, LaTeX document and delete everything and just keep the commands and that way you'll get his style sheet her style sheet and and everything works and then keep adding your material and once your material added you can tweak it in the way you want it and the references are basically Wikipedia, Wikibooks, LaTeX projects, CTAN and there's a lot of stuff available on internet and you're only limited by the amount of time you can spend reading the LaTeX book by Leslie Lamport and Kunut. Thank you.